Hi all. Today we're going to learn how to set up an ESP32 controller as a web server that will respond to HTTP GET requests. We can use this to control the microcontroller from a client application that will also return data to it. In fact, as part of the example I'll walk through in this video, we'll look at both the ESP32 C code running the server and a Python HTTP client application we can use to communicate with it. I'll have all the code from this video posted in a link you'll find in the description below. Normally, you'd have to hunt around quite a bit to track all this information down and put it together, but I've packaged it up in one place to make it easier for you to try. All you need is a very affordable ESP32 controller board and a PC with Python installed. And of course, access to a Wi-Fi network that you can connect your board to. First thing we'll do is look at the C code in the Arduino IDE for the ESP32 controller. I've commented the code quite well for your understanding, so I'll go pretty quickly through this and skip some lines that are not too important. First, we need to include a Wi-Fi library for connecting to the Wi-Fi network. We need to include the ESP async web server library as well as uh, async TCP library for this example. Unfortunately, these are not part of the standard ESP libraries, so you'll need to download it first. They are available in their corresponding GitHub libraries, and I've provided the links in the code comments, along with instructions about where to place them. As usual, you need to provide your Wi-Fi network name and password so the controller can have access. And here we declare asynchronous web server server. We'll go to our setup function now. We are setting up the built-in LED on the ESP32 here so the client can actually control its state as either on or off. Again, as usual, we set up the serial interface that will connect the ESP32 to a PC via USB cable, and that will also uh, allow us to monitor what's going on. We have our standard Wi-Fi setup code here we can breeze through as we've covered it before and has plenty of resources for reference. Next, we come to setting up our server and binding it to a handling function. Okay, We specify for the incoming requests the index root as the forward slash and that we will only handle HTTP GET requests. Next, we have code that will extract from the incoming request the number of parameters in the request, and then loop, loop through each parameter and associated value. The code prints out the parameter data through the serial interface, which we will view in the Arduino IDE serial monitor. I've also added some code that will look for specific parameter names and values to control the built-in LED of the ESP32. After the request has been processed, we have to give a response to the request or client that indicates everything is okay, along with some return data. In this case, the code is just returning a counter value that increments every time it gets a new request from a client. Finally, we begin the server itself. That's really it for the ESP32 code portion. Uh, let's quickly have a look at the corresponding Python code that we'll use as the HTTP client. What I've decided to do for the Python HTTP client code is to make use of a GUI so we can enter parameters and send requests through a nice interface. It's really straightforward to set up and makes life easier when it comes time to experimenting with things. First, we import some Python libraries for the simple GUI itself and also for handling the HTTP requests. Then we have some code to lay out the graphical user interface itself. I'll skip through that since it's fairly clear what's happening once you take a look for yourself. There's also plenty of resources available online that explains uh, PySimple GUI. But the GUI does allow a user to select between parameter types and uh, to enter the values. You'll see when I run it. When there's a request through the GUI to send a request, the code assembles the data and issues a request to the URL path that was specified. Once it gets a response from the server, it will print out the return data. 
for reference, this is the GUI window we get from this Python code. And finally, we get to the demonstration itself. Okay, so I've opened up the Arduino IDE serial monitor and uh, connected the board and started running it. And we can see the uh, IP address that it reports um, once the Wi-Fi is connected. And what we will do is we will copy that um, IP address and paste it into the URL, URL location field of the GUI that we uh, that we designed. You also see a live shot of the uh, the SP32 board on the top right. Now we pick our parameter type, right? So I basically created two different types, message and LED control. So LED control in this case, parameter value of on, and we'll press the button send request. And actually you can see on the serial monitor that the ESP32 has received the request for LED on, and you actually see that the LED has actually come on the board. There is a, a response. Now we want to turn on off the LED, send the request, and we see the LED turned off and that the, of course, the ESP32 received it. Uh, you can see that in the serial uh, monitor output and the command counter keeps on incrementing. So we'll send the same request off again, uh, just to see that the counter, uh, that they received the request and the, and the counter itself increments. Next, we will turn it on again, just to ensure everything is working. Okay. So now let's, let's try a message type parameter uh, to pass along to the ESP32 board. Okay, this is anything, send the request. And we see that the board received that message. This is anything. Okay, clear the output just to clean things up. Send another message. Okay, we'll send that request. And we see that, yeah, another message passed. No problem. LED control, turn it off. And you can you get the idea, guys. So We've demonstrated that um, you know we can set up the ESP32 as an asynchronous server, and we created a, a Python client um, to communicate with it. And that's all for now. Uh, if you like this video, please subscribe, please like. Until next time, have fun tinkering.